It's a sad fact that in our times, torture occurs all over the world. It can destroy the lives of individuals and families living here in the UK. I used to dread the sound of the chains that they would shackle you with. The guards would take a delight in dragging them across the floor as they were going to a cell. You wondered if it was you they were coming for. Then you'd start to quake, well I would. I'd start shivering. And if they went past my door and they went to some poor sods further down the line, I would feel a bit relieved because I knew it wasn't my turn today. I was uh, dragged into this swimming pool with filthy water with about five to six dead bodies floating and they drowned me approximately five times. After that they took me and throwed me in a small room with two mattresses mounted vertically, soaked with petrol. And they lit up the, uh, the uh, mattresses and I was completely burnt. I used to have a very large circle of friends. Now I can count my friends on the fingers of one hand and still have room. I find it very hard to trust people, to take them into my confidence. I don't go out very often. I spend a lot of time in the house. I don't like to mix with people so much. In a way, you know, it has broken me, but I try as much as I can not to show it. For torture survivors who have been tortured abroad and when they come and they return to the UK and try to get some normalcy back to their life, one of the things that they find that they are missing the most is a sense of acknowledgement. Having a legal process before an official court is one way in which that acknowledgement can be achieved. I think it's imperative that a torture survivor should have the right of access to a court to take action against either individuals or the state which was responsible for the act of torture. Since I've come back, myself and the other detainees, we've tried to get some form of compensation, redress, off the Saudi government. We've tried all the ways possible through the British courts, going as far as to the House of Lords. We've been blocked at every turn. Our attorneys, people like Redress, Amnesty International have all been wonderful in helping this cause. But we seem to go down a blind alley every time. There's a general rule of British law that foreign countries are immune, meaning that they cannot be sued in British courts. There are exceptions to this, of course, such as commercial transactions or contracts. But in relation to serious violations of human rights like torture, the courts of this country have made no exceptions. The Torture Damages Bill is a private member's bill which enables torture survivors to bring a civil claim for damages against the individuals or states who perpetrated the torture. The bill is therefore important because of what it seeks to do, which is to permit justice to apply. And I would hope that all governments, but specifically in this case the British government, as it looked at that issue and at the essential rights and just good sense of what is in the bill, but they would say that that was a bill which actually merited their support. It's very difficult to talk about torture. I don't want anybody else to have to go through what I've been through. And what I've been through is not as bad as what a lot of people have been through who've had worse tortures than me.